it again. Hello, my friends. Oh, my goodness. So it is so good to be with you. Thank you so much for joining in on our virtual Zoom class. I know that we have a lot of students in class today. So that's why we had to mute you. <laughs> and trust me, you'll be glad I did so that you don't hear sewing machines on top of sewing machines on top of sewing machines, right? But if you do have a question and we, we can actually unmute you, I, I always like to joke uh, and say, I got the power, boom, 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 boom. Because with the push of a button, we can do that, right? And I say, I wish I had that same power with my children. Mute unmute <laughs> there you go but i am so glad that you're here with us today there is a chat box at the bottom of your screen and for those of you on ipads it's going to be on the right hand bottom of your screen there will be a little thought bubble that says chat and you can go ahead and uh, type messages right there and be able to use the chat box okay so, uh, let's see. Okay, it says, I'm watching too because I don't have my stuff. Yeah, no worries. You know, if you don't have your stuff, it's perfectly okay. You can actually watch it later on. So, the beauty of this is that it's all recorded. And so, you're able to, you know, go back, rewatch, And sometimes it's a lot easier to actually watch it first and then go so afterwards. Uh, so we'll give some time for you to be able to sew as well. I'm not going to try and go too fast, but obviously if things get, you know, if it's just a little too crazy for you of trying to do both things at once, then what I like to tell everyone is just to take a deep breath and it's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. So, all right. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm hearing an, um, an echo in my earphones so I'm gonna actually take these off for right now but if there's questions that people have for me will you just let me know and I'll put that back in sound good okay because <laughs> I got these voices in my head that are just talking back and forth to each other it's kind of scary <laughs> all right so um, let me let me see yeah no worries are we recording did you guys hit record Okay, so it is being recorded, so you don't have to worry about the recording of it. I will actually send a replay link out there for you so that you can uh, watch it, and you can actually even download it onto your personal computer if you wanted to, um, so that you could watch it and rewatch it as often as you'd like. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get started with today. Now, if you had received... Let's see where my notes are. Oh, no, not those ones. Where did my notes go for the downloadable notes? You should have received a, a, an email from me with the thing. Of course, now I don't see it. Hello. Well, anyone want to show me theirs? Lisa's got hers. Where did I put that? Oh, my goodness gracious. I have my pattern. Okay, will you print me out another one, please? <laughs> so, anyway, and you should have um, a notes uh, piece of paper. And one of the things that we like to do when we do our virtual classes is that we, as often as possible, we do like to give you uh, a downloadable, printable notes so that you can take notes from uh, home and be able to write these things down. Oh, oops. Someone. someone shared their screen okay there we go <laughs> we're good so if you have um, if you have your notes take those out if you didn't have a chance to download your notes no big deal take out a piece of paper and a pencil and just follow along with us because um, there are going to be things that you may want to write down so are you printing that out yeah, for me awesome okay so Let's go ahead and get started. I guess I should give you a formal welcome. My name is Chris Thurgood, and I'm the owner of My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop, located in Logan and Sandy, Utah. Um, we also have a franchise in Midway, Utah, called uh, Midway Wool by My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop. Um, what I'm going to show you today is something that I 
have been having so much fun with. So much fun because it is having the ability of doing some great piecing on a foundation grid, which makes things so much faster, easier, more precise, more durable, and a heck of a lot of fun. And the thing is, you can do some of these uh, quilts and projects. <laughs> There's a drive-by in the background. Um, quilts and projects with the easy piecing grid some quilts that you would have never done otherwise because you think to, you think to yourself oh i could never you know i would never want to cut those little squares and then sew all those little pieces together do you all have that person in your life who says why in the world would you cut up perfectly good fabric cut it up in tiny pieces and sew back together right so you know what you do that with that person in your life adios no i'm just kidding <laughs> We don't have time for that negativity in our lives, right? It's going to be so much fun as we sew those pieces together, and it's going to be something beautiful. Thanks, David. Okay, ta-da! Here are the downloadable notes. Yay! There we go. Okay, so this is where we're at. So what materials you need for today, if you have them, you don't, you don't have to you can go back and and do this later too is a one panel of easy piecing grip what does that look like it looks like this okay one panel of easy piecing grid and i'll explain the principle behind that here in just a minute you want some red white and blue scraps i got a feeling that you've got a lot of them hanging around right if you're like me and of course your sewing machine iron rotary cutter seam ripper just in case and needles and thread all right so let's talk first about what's the principle behind easy piecing grid so i'm going to come right over here to my cutting station and pull this out for you okay all right i've got quite the mess going on here don't i there we go Does this look like your sewing room? <laughs> All right, here we go. So Easy Piecing Grid, it is, um, this is produced by 10 sisters. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Quilt Smart, same kind of principle here. And the idea is it is an interfacing, a very lightweight interfacing. And you can see right here that there is a grid that is printed right on here and in that grid there are little let's uh, get a little bit closer shot up here if we can um, there are these little tick marks in each of the four corners you see that okay that's really important especially when it comes time to do our half square triangles which we'll talk about today uh, you want to pay attention to those all right um, Easy piecing grid is nine squares across by 14 inches down, and it all depends on the size grid that you use for your projects. So I'm gonna show you a few different examples today of what that looks like with a finished project, but you have your choice between uh, a half inch finished, this one I'm using today is a one inch finished, you have one and a half inch finished, and two inch finished okay the other thing i want to make sure you know and and this will make a lot more sense as we start piecing this together is that even though this is one inch across if i were to grab my ruler and check it out it's okay let's think about this for a second if it's one inch finished we need to be at, we need to cut our pieces to be one and a half right because we're taking in a quarter inch and a quarter inch on each side so you're always going to cut your pieces to be a half inch larger than what is on this on the grid so if this is one inch finished this really should measure what i want you to think about that for a minute it should measure one and a half inches right well if i put my ruler on here to check it actually is a little bit more than one and a half inches. That's exactly what you want. Don't fret and think that there's something wrong with the grid. That's exactly what you want. And you will see why here as we go throughout today. 
So the whole idea is that you are going to piece um, on top of this grid, and it's almost like a puzzle, okay? It's almost like putting together a puzzle, and then when you have it all laid, in, laid out in front of you, you can now sew long seams, long continuous seams, rather than one piece at a time. It's awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of my examples here. So we're going to take a look at some of my examples right here. Let's uh, go ahead and pull the camera up. Okay, so this is the one that we're going to be working on today. This is the pineapple, obviously. And this one was done with a um, two-inch finish grid. So again, I want you to think about, if I started out with a two-inch finish grid, what are my cut pieces going to be? They're going to be two and a half, right? Okay, so you can see that that's going to it's going to be a really cute door hanging, wall hanging. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I just love it. But then, that's the, the largest size grid that it's printed. But then you also have the smallest size. How many of you fell in love with these when I showed them? Okay, these are the tiny little pineapples. And let me go ahead and let's get an up close of this real quick right here okay you can see right here that a half inch finish means that you're starting out with one inch one inch square a cut one inch square I mean those are tiny tiny can you imagine having to piece all those together can you imagine having to do little half square triangles on this I don't know about you, but that would drive me crazy. <laughs> now, I know there's a lot of tiny piecers out there, and you love it. But for me personally, I would much rather do it on the grid and know that I am still getting my perfect points, and it went 10 times as fast as if I were to do it individually. So you can see the difference. This is the half-inch finished. This is the two-inch finished. All right, you can see that. Now let's take a look at something in between and then we'll go ahead and get started. The in between would be, let's see, this one is one and a half inch finished. All right, this is a flag quilt, as you can see. Super fun, super scrappy. That's another beauty and another principle behind Easy Piecing Grid is the fact that you can make your uh, your project so scrappy where you couldn't do this normally with if you were doing um, some people might ask well why wouldn't you do uh, you know strip piecing well you could do strip piecing but you're not going to get it as scrappy as if you do something like this okay so this is a one and a half inch finish this is going to be a darling table topper or I could put it on the wall okay um, and that, again, is one panel. And then let me show you one more, and that is this one. Okay, this one is one inch finished. Let's take a look at that one inch finish. Isn't that cute? And this was done with six panels. So the six panels can make a really cute quilt or you could cut these up and make, let's take a look down here. You could make placemats. Wouldn't that be fun? All right. Now, if I were making placemats and I was trying to cut, piece all those one inch squares together, uh-uh, no thanks. But doing it on the grid makes it so simple. So that's kind of the principle behind Easy Piecing Grid. And I hope that explains why we're choosing to do it this method rather than one piece at a time. All right? Faster, easier, more efficient, great way to use scraps, all of the above. All right? And a ton of fun. A ton of fun. Let me tell you, it's like a Lay's potato chip. You can't just have one.
and you are going to have so much fun with this it's going to be addictive and you're going to want to make more and you're going to see other patterns that are out there and go hmm i wonder if i can easy piece that one with the easy piecing grid right so lots of possibilities with easy piecing grid all right so moving on with our notes section let's talk about cutting the squares all right so i've got my pile of scraps here voila does this look like you guys right here they're all over the place and i've got little ones and i have big ones and whatnot now obviously you can make this as scrappy or not as scrappy as you want if we go back to this example of this pineapple you can see that when jackie put this one together she did not go scrappy it's all the same print going all the way across okay it's not as scrappy but it's still very cute on my example I did I went scrappy so you can kind of see the differences there all right so you'll have to decide for yourself which route you want to go uh, today I think what I'm gonna do is go go scrappy why not why not I'm gonna live on the edge um, but let me show you a few principles on cutting and then I'm gonna give you a minute to go cut yours okay so today I am going to be piecing on let me remind myself what I'm doing today one inch finished okay so if I'm doing one inch finished that means I need to start out at think of it for yourself what am I going to start out at one and a half okay one and a half that's really important to remember all right on this particular ruler I have a half inch right in there and I have my one inch so I'm going to go ahead and just use that now some people will ask are you supposed to use your the lines on your mat or do you use your ruler I always go to the the ruler first so I some, sometimes when I teach I'll actually do this on purpose where I will um, show people get this over here a little bit more that see it doesn't matter I don't even want to try to line it up along my line because I don't want you to think that you have to do it that way so you're gonna see right there that I'm actually not and I'm using my ruler to to do that so I'm gonna start out at one and a half um, make sure you have a nice firm hold on here you're cutting from your stomach out trying to keep nice and even pressure Okay, there we go I set that aside and then I'm going to turn this and cross cut the opposite way but I already know that I have a fold in there I know that I have my selvage in there so guess what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna give it a quick chop off right there I've made sure to catch all those things and toss it aside <clears throat> maybe save it for a crumb quilt right some of you who've been following me know that I'm on this crumb quilt kit where we're using all of our little scraps <laughs> okay so I've got a let's see how many four in there and then I just keep cutting and I keep cutting all right until I have a bunch of little scraps now obviously this is going to be way too many than I need for uh, today's project but you know what I'm gonna have so much fun I can't wait to make one for my mom I can't wait to make one for my sister uh, you know so I'm just gonna set those aside now another way to to cut quickly is to actually do what I call power cutting and again not that important for uh, if you're just doing a small project but if you have a lot of squares to cut and you want to go faster the way that I do power cutting is I will think to myself okay how I'll actually use my my uh, cutting mat here and what is uh, let's see one and a half four and a half okay so if I want to do three sets one and a half times three is four and a half right so I'm going to just trim this off at the four and a half inch line and set that aside and then I work backwards I work backwards um, and the reason why I do that is because now I'm not having to lift up my ruler and move it lift up the ruler and change it and so I just go from right now this is of course going to be different if you're a left-hander but I'm going to go from right to left normally with my cutting I always go left to right if you're going to get into power cutting 
and maybe this will be the day, maybe you'll save this in the back of your head for another day. But I divided up how many, you know, how many one and a half inch pieces I'm doing. And now, can you see what I'm doing? I'm just gonna slide this across, slide it down. So I'm at the three and I slide it down. See, notice I didn't have to pick it up and nothing's moving and I'm at the one and a half and I go backwards. So again, entirely up to you, but there you have it. Hey, David, could you ask um, Cindy for her Shape Cut Plus for me, please? All right, so I've got a bunch of squares there, and what I want you to do right now is uh, go back to your workstations. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do this, and go ahead and cut some squares for today that you're going to use. Again, it's dependent upon what size... Uh, grid you have. So those of you who have half inch finished grid, you're going to cut your pieces to one inch. If you have one inch finished grid, you're going to cut <clears throat> to one and a half. If you have one and a half inch finished grid, you're going to cut your pieces to two. And if you have two inch finished grid, you're going to cut your pieces to two and a half. So let's go ahead, take some time to do that. I want you to cut all your reds, all your whites, all your blues. If you don't get to all of them before we start again, no worries, but let's go ahead and go to our workstations and get cutting, all right? And I'll just kind of take a look at uh, your zooms and see where we're at. When I see, when I see the whites of your eyes back <laughs> on the uh, screen, I'll know that we're ready to move on. While you're cutting, are there any questions so far? Let's go ahead and unmute. And if there's somebody who, or can they, they can raise their hand, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can raise your hand and then uh, Adam will unmute you. And if you have a question, let us know. So I'm gonna keep cutting and I'm gonna multitask here. <laughs> and I'm gonna cut and answer questions at the same time. Yes. Do the half squares need to be bigger? Do the half squares need to be bigger? Yes. They're, they're one inch. So if you've got half squares, you've got to do one inch. It's Everything's a half inch bigger than what your finished grid is, okay? On the top of your uh, pelon, little piece, well, I call it pelon, it's not pelon, um, is, is what it says one inch finished, and it will tell you use one and a half inch squares. Okay. Who are we? Who are we? Um, Hi, Vicky. Hi, Chris. Oh, if we don't have a grid and we want to mark one, do we mark it at, at the finished size? Hi, Vicky. Hi. If we don't have a grid and we need to mark one for today, do we uh -huh. mark the finished size? You will no, you, not the finished size. You will do it a half inch bigger. So that's, but actually even a little bit more than a half inch. And let me um, sh share with you why on this. Because we actually need a little bit bigger on this than what the cut piece is gonna be. Because we're actually gonna leave little spaces in between. So if you are drawing your own grid for today, um, Vicki, what size are you doing yours at? I didn't pick a size. Okay, let's, should we just go ahead and pick one together? Your directions call for two, that or I would do one and a half. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do two. And so you would actually draw yours uh, just a titch over two and a half. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, Lisa has a question. Hold on, Lisa. Okay, I think he's, oh, there, there we yeah. go. Okay. Oh, my friend. Huh. My question is um, on the half square triangles. So yes. If I'm doing the two inch finished grid, I know my pieces, I was just gonna use strips, two and a half inch strips. Mm -hmm. But when I do the half, um, half square triangles, I still use a two and a half inch strip for those, or do I need to? No, we're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna go over okay. that, and it is gonna be bigger. That's Thank a you. Question. Yeah, no problem, Lisa. 
Who else? There's a Deidre. Deidre? What can I help you with? I was just one going to ask the same question I think she just asked. I was going to use two and a half inch strips, strips for the two inch finish, but it doesn't sound like I can. You're, no, you can. Two and, a, okay. yeah, two and a half inch strips, you can. She was asking earlier about, she was going to draw her own grid. Oh, um, oh, okay. All right, cool. So we can use about. jelly rolls. Oh, for absolutely. The two, oh, perfect. Yep. Thank you. Oh, yeah. No problem. I'm so glad you asked because um, that is a great way to use your two and a half inch strips for sure. All righty. Anyone else? Uh, looks like a, a Vaughn. Oh, there I am. <laughs> Hi, Chris. I'm using the, the, the sheets that I that received in the mail, and there's a lot of excess on it. Can we cut them down just a little bit so it's not so hard to maneuver under our machine? Yes, you definitely can. Okay. Great question. Okay. Yep. You will need, let's see, if I have my thing here, one, two, three, four. It's going to be four squares across and I believe seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. yeah, seven squares down. So if you want to cut it down, you definitely can. Okay, there's just Sandy with the question. Okay, Sandy. Um, what happened to it? Whoops, maybe not. Oh, hold on. Okay. Sandy? What kind of fabric are they using to make their grid? Uh, I was going to try it with Shape Flex. Is that what to do? Use? Um, yeah, you could do that with Shape Flex. If you've got Shape Flex on hand, you, you definitely can do that. What other are they possibly using to make their I would grid? Say like maybe probably a fusible interfacing of any sort. So Thank yeah, you. the Shape Flex is good. SF101, that's a great product. We use it all the time. So a lot of you probably, you know, might have it on hand. All right, how are we doing? I mean, I'm just scrolling through, taking a look. Some of you are sewing, some aren't sewing. Either way is perfectly fine. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Teresa here. Mine hey, Teresa. actually ha has a question to do with the ruler. So I bought the grippy stuff. Do you have grippy on all of your rulers or would you leave it off of one when you're doing that power cutting? If you're doing the power cutting, yeah, that, could, that would not work. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. That's actually a really good question, Teresa, because if, for those of you who might not know what she's referring to, uh, there's a grippy spray that I absolutely love. And um, I usually will put it on my rulers, but there's a few rulers I keep without it. I'm going to go ahead and cut my uh, thing down just a little bit down further. So if you're going to do the power cutting, it's obviously not going to slide down. So that's why that's such a good question because um, you, yeah, you wouldn't have that mobility to slide it down your fabric. There's also something called the Shake Cut Plex. Did she have that? Where? Oh, you did bring it. I didn't see that you brought it over. Let me show you another product that's really cool. Uh, there's the Shake Cut Plus. There's also Stripology. Have you guys seen this ruler? This is really something else. Whew. Um, let's take a look at how this works while you're cutting. What you can do is actually, you know, place your fabric underneath it. This on top. <clears throat> and I'm just going to line this up. There we go. 
Okay, we'll try that again. So this is the Stripology Ruler by Creative Grids. I'm going to put my zero right there at the line. And can you get up just a tad closer, David, so I can point something out? If you take a look right down here, you will see markings right here and you will also see slats that have like extended channels so that you can actually get your ruler right in there and be able to cut and then you go to the next one and cut so there's no lifting up of rulers at all so you don't have to you know worry about having the fabric come up lift up when you do that so let me go ahead and do that right now I'll show you kind of how that works. So this can, this can be a really fast way to cut as well. So I did one and a half. I go now to the three. I go to the four and a half. Do you see that? And it just slides right along there. So if you're doing a lot of cutting, this is a great way to go. Oh, I didn't get my ends there. How's that? <laughs> you get what I'm doing. Alrighty. So that's stripology. And then there's also one called shape cut plus. Shape cut plus. So same same principle, same idea, just different companies. The nice thing about the, the stripology is that it does have the no slip grip on the back, which makes it really nice. So there's that. Okay. Alrighty, how are we doing with our cutting? We good? Okay. Um, can you scroll through for me uh, real quick so I can see everyone real quick? And let's bring the camera right back up. Okay, Wilma, looks like Wilma has a question. Oh, no question, I think she's just waving. Okay. Uh, Mary Jo has a question. Oh, just one moment, Mary Jo. So you have to unmute yourself. There we go. Hi, Chris. I am. There's um, a pattern that has hearts. That is. Do you hear this weird noise? Yeah, there is a weird noise. Oh, I think it's on your end, Emma. or Mary Jo, excuse me. Mary Jo, okay. Mary jo why don't you go ahead and just type something in the comments? Okay. 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 No problem. Sorry about that. I think it might have something to do with your speakers. Yeah, it's reverberating. Yeah. Any other questions before we move on? Okay. Let's go ahead and get started then. And the first thing, let's see. I want to... I want to do according to my notes I gave you. Tips for cutting squares. Okay, putting together the puzzle. This is the most fun part, you guys. I love this because I get to audition my fabrics before I ever um, even sew them. This is the beauty of this method also is because you can create these giant quilts, but you do them in bite-sized chunks. And um, Adam, would you grab for me the... Um, downstairs in the in the warehouse area the ten sisters books yeah. okay and so this um this is just a small portion of it but if you had the large pieces you could do one puzzle piece at a time and you're only focused on one area at a time and that is what is so much fun about this all right so i'm gonna go ahead and take my little pattern here from Ten Sisters. This is the Patriotic Pineapple. And she was kind enough to let us um, use this for our free class. So thank you, Carmen, of Ten Sisters for this. And I am just going to follow this exact layout. So let's get up a little bit closer here and take a look at what's happening. We've got background pieces. Whoops. We have background pieces right here. You see that in the tan. Don't worry about the border pieces. We don't do that until after it's all over. 
but I have a half square triangle, another half square triangle, and a background piece. Do you see that on your pattern? Did, can you see how there's little lines in between so that you can see that that's actually the square? All right. So um, this one, this red, this first red stripe consists of a half square triangle with a solid square, with a solid square, with a half square triangle. The white is all white squares. It's not one strip. Okay, this is another difference with Easy Piecing Grid is you do have to divide those things up into squares. You can't just put a strip on and sew it. It won't work with this method. All right, so with my pattern right there beside me and with my grid, I am going to start putting together the puzzle. So let's, oh my goodness, you know what I just realized? I realized I didn't have a background fabric. I better go grab one, huh? about hmm, trying to decide whether I want the tan or if I want to go crazy and go polka dot tan polka dot what do you guys think tan type in the comments what you guys think tan tan or polka dot <clears throat> okay looks like most of you are saying tan you guys don't want me to go crazy <laughs> I love the polka dot, but it might be too big of a polka dot, huh? So it's going to get kind of lost in the squares. Polka dot's making a comeback. Yeah. <laughs> oh, polka dot's making a comeback. <laughs> there we go. I'll, I'll stick with tan. All right. Either way, they're so cute because it's Kimberbell fabric, right? All right. Let me hurry and cut a couple squares real quick. Well, there we go. One and a half. Hi, Cindy Lou. <laughs> All right. Boom, bada, bang. I totally forgot my background squares. No big deal. Okay. All right, let's try that again. Here we have it. So we have our grid. We have our pattern. I'm going to follow it step by step. Now, the other thing that you'll notice on this pattern is that she does tell you that you need two uh, blue squares, right? You can see that right here. You need two. You need four blue half square triangles, four, let's see, eight red squares, four half square red uh, half square triangles that are red in the background and eight white. So all of those patterns, that's what you're gonna see. So it makes it so easy. Now, obviously this is for one pineapple. So let's say you were doing multiple pineapples on the pennant, you would times, and I had seven pennants, you would times that all by seven. I would need 14 blue squares. I would have 28 half square triangles and so forth. So you can do the math there. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, the first one is going to be a tan piece and then a half square triangle, which I have not made yet. I'll show you that here in a minute. And that's a half square triangle too, and then that's a tan piece. All right, I have a half square triangle here. I have a blue piece and another blue piece. Can you guys get up closer on this, please? And then we've got a half square triangle. Now we have another half square triangle and I have my red pieces. It's so hard to decide which ones I want to do. Do you see what I mean when I say it's like putting together a puzzle? It really is because you're just, you're playing with your fabrics and you're saying, uh, I like that. No, I'm not so sure about that, right? Um, now I'm going to go white. Now you can do this after you're done with the half square triangles too, but I'm just going to quickly show you what's happening with this pineapple here. So you guys go ahead and do yours as well while we're doing this, while we're laying everything out. Chris, someone asks what side of the grid you put the squares. 
Okay, that's a great question. And I guess I didn't answer that earlier, so I'm glad you asked. You wanna make sure that it's on the bumpy side is face up. Bumpy side face up, okay, that's the fusible. Um, any of you who have seen me demonstrate this before, <laughs> you're probably laughing at me right now. Do you remember, those? some of you saw this in real time, <laughs> where I accidentally fused to the back. <laughs> so so I, I wasn't paying attention to where my, my fusible was facing. So I'm like ironing it. I'm like, oh, this is so great. And I go, what? just happened what just happened everything lifted off and the bottom was stuck to my ironing station yeah not good not good <laughs> you guys remember that oh sheesh you know there there is no lack of embarrassing moments for the in the life of chris thurgood let me just tell you that was one of them all right there we go this is so fun and it's very relaxing. And what I've noticed is that a lot of people love doing this with their with kids, with their children. And we even had someone who did it with her husband when she was making the scrappy patriotic hearts. They did that. So it's pretty cool. Okay, my friends. So you can see that that's kind of laid out, but I've got to fill it in with these half score triangles, right? So I could keep this the way it is and, and set it aside, and I go, yeah, I like that, or I can just set it aside right now. Now, if you were trying to lay things out, another tip for you would be, you could actually use, and I didn't grab one this morning, but you could use an Elmer's glue stick and actually just put a little, just a dab of glue right there just to hold it in place. Because that way, if you need to, you know, you, if you, you don't want to fuse it yet, then just put a little dab of glue stick, no big deal, it's the washable glue stick uh, from, you know, Walmart, wherever, and you just hold it in place so that while you're moving things around, it's not going to shift on you. Okay, so this doesn't quite look like the pineapple yet. We've got to do half square triangles. Okay, so let's talk about making half square triangles today. On your notes section, you have See, the two at once, four at once, and eight at once, because I'm going to show you all three methods. And I have a math formula for you as well, so um, it, which will show up on the screen. We're going to do two at once first. Okay? So two half square triangles at once. What you're going to do is actually think about um, what your cut size is, and you're going to add one. So let's say, for example, we'll do this on mine right now. If I am going, if, if what I've been cutting out is one and a half, I'm going to cut a two, um, a two and a half inch square. Okay, this is if I'm only doing two half square triangles. I'm gonna show you all three methods so that you can use it for whether it's this project or another project later on. So it's the cut size, cut size, and, and we should probably clarify that on there. It's the cut size plus one inch. So my cut size, again, for mine in particular, is one and a half inches cut size. So I am gonna add one inch, so I'm gonna cut two and a half inches. And I'm gonna just cut out one red and one white, or excuse me, one tan, because that's my background, right? Okay, what did I say, two and a half? Yep, all right. So I have one red and one tan that are two and a half inches. So again, yours may be different depending on what size you guys are working on today. But whatever your cut size is that you've been doing, just add one inch and you'll be good to go. This is how you do two half square triangles at a time. So this method would be perfect if you were only doing this one pineapple, right? Because you only, no, actually it went on this one. 
it would be down here. If I were doing the blue, I've got to do four half square triangles, right? So you're going to see the four at once here in a minute. But on this row, this would be the perfect, if you were only doing this one, you would do this, you could do this method. All right. So again, it's the, wait, <laughs> we're on two half square triangles at once. Cut size plus one. Okay. So if you have your notes, write that down and now you'll have it handy. What you're going to do now is put right sides together. Okay. And one on top of the other. Let's get a little bit closer here. Okay, so I have two, okay, just a second. I've got two, I have a background piece and I have my red piece. They're two and a half inch size. I'm gonna place this right sides together. And then I'm gonna take this handy dandy, it's my favorite tool, it's called the Quilter's Magic Wand. There's a lot of products out there that do the same thing. So you might have something that looks a little different, or you can still just use your ruler as well. But what I like about it is that it has a, a straight, um, like laser cut line down the middle, which is gonna line up along the diagonal of my squares, and then it's a perfect quarter inch beyond that. So I'll do it on this side, because it's a little bit lighter. I want you to be able to see it. So I'm gonna place this right here, diagonal to diagonal, and just draw a line. Move this over just a titch and draw my line. Okay, now I have two lines on here that are a quarter inch away from the center. All right, so now let's go over to my sewing machine. And I'm going to sew directly on those two lines. around and so on this next line and cut my threads okay so there you have it I have sewn on directly on both lines maybe I should have used a different thread color so you could see that better but believe me when I say <laughs> both lines have been sewn on all right now I'll come back over here and just trim down the center. Now I have two half square triangles. I want to square these up to be, let's see, on this one, what am I squaring these up to be? One and a half inches, right? So you're squaring yours up to be whatever size you have. So I'm going to use my Tucker Trimmer ruler. Love, love, love this ruler for half square triangles. There's also another one I love, so you might have one or the other, is the quilt in a day triangle square up ruler. Both of them I love equally. Um, or you could just use a regular, like, little small square ruler. But one of the things I love about this method is that I, there are methods where you actually pull it out first and then trim it up. I prefer keeping it closed, using my seam line as my guide. Let's get closer on the shot if we can. And then I'm going to look at my two and a half inch line right here. So we're gonna get just a tad closer. And a little bit more. You can just zoom in on that. Perfect, okay. There's a there's a two and a half inch line right here that it's going to place that line directly on top of my sewn line. But I'm actually working with, what am I working with? One and a half inches. I have to remind myself I'm not working with two inch grid today. <laughs> so one and a half inches is what I want to cut it down to. You see that there is actually quite a bit of excess there. Um, if that bothers you, it's okay. Um, you're just going to trim that up. It gives, it's what gives you um, more precise 
uh, half square triangles. Now, I will say you could take that measurement that I previously talked about where I said add one. You could just add seven eighths. If, if you were really did not want to waste any fabric at all, just add seven eighths to that measurement. Okay, so write that down. Write seven eighths, but I am not a seven eighths girl. I just like to cut to the full. So that's why I cut one inch. So there's a little bit more than I need, but that's okay. I'm gonna now trim it up. Do you see how nice that is? Because the, the one and a half inch line is right there. I place it directly on the sewn line. All right, so I'm just gonna trim this way and once this way. And now I have a perfect one and a half inch half square triangle. Ta -da! So exciting, right? I also like to trim my dog ears before I even open it up as well. Because if I were to open this up, and if, for those of you who might not be familiar with the term dog ears, that's these little pokies that now stick out. So it, rather than trimming them later, I do what I call a Superman cut. I go um, just cut those at an angle on both sides. Can we get up closer on this one? And <clears throat> This, and I call it a Superman cut because it reminds me of a Superman badge, right? <laughs> the little logo of Superman. So, so both angles go up like that. And now I can open it up. I have no dog ears hanging out over the side and I have a perfect one and a half inch half square triangle. Okay, so um, I'll do that with this other one again. This was cut larger. I'm going to use the tucker trimmer, look for the one and a half inch line on here, place it directly on top of the sewn line, and trim up my edges. There we go. But I'm gonna also trim my dog ears before I move on by giving it a Superman cut. There we go. And now I'm going to press those. So what I'll do to that, let me pull my little ironing station over here. Okay, sorry, give me a second. All right, I'm using the little wool mat. I love these wool mats right here. Any of you discovered how awesome these are? Um, it's not the prettiest looking thing in the world <laughs> because it gets it gets kind of brown and, and ugly, but it is so nice because it keeps the, the heat right there. You're gonna get such beautiful pressing with the wool mat. Okay, so as you know, we mostly press towards the dark side, right? If we have a if we have two pieces of fabric and one is lighter and one is darker. The kind of the rule of thumb is we press to the dark. So the easiest way to do that is to keep your dark on top when you press. If you keep your dark on top, you, it will automatically just go press to that side. So we're gonna keep, um, we're gonna do what I call setting the seam. Setting the seam allows all those fibers, all those threads to come together as one. Sometimes when it goes through the sewing machine, it gets a little skiwampus, right? So we want to get rid of those little bubbles or puckers or whatever might happen. So I set the seam and then I press. And there you have it. I have two half, uh, one and a half inch half square triangles. So cool. I can add this now to my pineapple. So that's how you do two at a time. You're going to take it once again, you're going to take the cut size and add one. If you don't want to waste as much fabric, take the cut size, add seven eighths, and you'll be good to go. I'm just going to go ahead and set those aside right now because now I'm going to show you how to do four half square triangles at a time. And that is going to be the one we want to do for our pineapple, for the, blue, for the pineapple top, I should say. So for the blue top, I'm going to do four at a time. Here's the math formula for that. You're going to take the cut size and times it by two. Okay, so my cut size is one and a half. I'm gonna multiply it by two, so I'm gonna cut my 
No, I'm going to add two. Uh, let me see, where did my notes go? Sometimes I have to double check my thinking because I'm thinking so quickly, right? Oh yeah, yep, we're good. Yeah, okay. So I have the one and a half, and I'm going to do it by two. So I'm going to cut it to be three, three inches. And I'm going to be able to get four out of this. Okay, so here's one of those. And then I notice that I have to do it with my background piece. So I'm going to also cut that as well. So you may be watching right now or you may be sewing along with me. Um, I'm going to show you this method, I'm going to show you the 8 method, and then I'm going to send you loose to do that. And I've got a couple videos for those of you who aren't going to be doing it at the same time. I have a couple videos for you to watch while um, people are, are making their half square triangles. So, Alright, so now what we're going to do with the 4 half square triangles, this is a little bit different than what we normally do. We're, not, we're actually not going to use this at all. We don't have to use... Uh, you know, a quarter inch line from the center like we do normally. Instead, what we're going to do is go around using a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the square, out, the outside square. Now, this is, again, it's a little more unconventional. Some people this bothers because they go, wait a minute, wait a minute, Chris, you've got bias seams going on there, you've got all sorts of stuff going on, you're going to wreak havoc on your whole entire quilt. No, I promise. We're good. What you'll want to do, is, and what I actually like to do, is I like to use a little bit of best press, some kind of starch alternative. Ooh, that's the, that's that's the string. There we go. And I like to give it a little press before I sew, and then that way it just adds just a titch of stability to those blocks, so I don't have to worry. Obviously, I have put way too much with that stream see that no worries it will dry up so again I'm going to go over to the sewing machine right now and sew a quarter inch all the way around so let's take a look at that I put my presser foot my needles in the down position get the video on there. And cut. Okay, so again, this is four half square triangles at once. All I did was I sewed all the way around that. Okay, so now I'm going to go back over to the cutting station. Move my mat here. And I'm going to cut diagonal this way and diagonal the opposite way. Okay, so I just have my ruler right here and I cut. And without having to lift anything, I could go like this and kind of maneuver myself. I'm actually using a rotating cutting mat right now so that I can just twist it around a little bit without disturbing my fabric. And I'm going to cut one more way. Now I have four half square triangles. Isn't that cool? All at one time. So let's take a look. We're going to do the same thing as we did before with trimming up to one and a half inches. So I put my one and a half inch line on my ruler and I line it up with the sewn line here. Now for those of you who might not have this ruler, I don't want you to fret. 
we can you can do it without it it's just easier with it let me show you how you would do it with a regular ruler if you've got a regular ruler what you have to do is you have to measure you have to see one and a half inches over here and one and a half inches down. So I'm going across and I'm going down and I'm working with the top right hand side of my ruler here. So I take a look and I go, okay, one and a half inches here, one and a half inches here. And I create this imaginary line between those two pieces, two points, between point A and point B. I'm making this imaginary line and that imaginary line is going to go on that sewn line. So if I take a look right here, I'm going to get up close here, um, one inch, and I want to make sure the half inch right here, can we get up just a little closer on this angle? Um, I'm going to make sure that the half inch line touches my sewn line. Okay, and I want to make sure the one and a half inch line touches the sewn line right there too. So you can see why it's doable. You can absolutely do it, but sometimes it's just so much easier to have that ruler for you. That's why everything can be done at, you know, without tools, but tools always make it so much easier, right? So you could uh, mark your ruler with the ruler tape. Yep, you certainly could, Nida. Uh, washi tape, yep, you could do that as well. All right, so again, one and a half inch line, one and a half inch line. I could create a, that imaginary line. I could put washi tape, whatever it is, and now I'm going to trim those sides. Do you see why I actually like to, I prefer um, trimming this up before I open it up? So much easier. Now I only have two sides to trim. I don't have all, I, have to, I don't have to go around to all four sides. So it makes it a lot faster. So there's my one and a half inch, and then I do my little um, Superman cuts, and there we go. All right. I'm just finger pressing that open. I should do that over to the dark side though. Okay. So that is as easy as it gets. I'll go ahead and, um, oh, where did, so you can see how I did it with a regular ruler. I'm going to go back to this ruler because all I have to do is my imaginary lines is no longer imaginary. <laughs> it's right there. And I'm going to just place it on top of the sewn line and trim. Trim and, whoops, trim. Superman cut. Boom and boom. You're going to get so fast at this that it will just be like, wow, this is kind of fun. I'm just, I'm just like this real quilter here, right? Here we go. Just trimming that up a little bit. It's like just giving it a little haircut, just a little haircut, just a little trim. And oh, it makes it just so much nicer. Trim and trim. In a perfect world, we'd all cut perfectly, we'd all sew perfectly, we'd all press perfectly. It's not really going to happen. I prefer being able to have a little bit of leeway to go bigger and then, and then square up. Just my personal preference. Okay, so that's how you do four half square triangles at a time. Is that um, pretty simple, right? You're going to take the cut size again, times it by two go all the way around all four uh, sides and then diagonal diagonal are you taking notes on all this I hope okay so there's my four half square triangles I'm going to set those aside and now I'll show you one more way of doing half square triangles and that is eight half square triangles at once so with this one I um, I'm gonna go back to red just because I needed some more red let me see, I'm going to use this cute bicycle fabric from Vintage Boardwalk. Okay, so the calculation for this one is you're going to take your cut size, times it by two, and add one. We're going to be able to get eight half square triangles out of this. So cool. Um, let me think. Let's see. There was something I was going to tell you.
Okay, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it with red and I'm going to do it with my background cream. All right. So let's think about this. If my cut size is one and a half inches, I'm gonna times it by two, which will be three, and I'm going to add one, so that'll be four. So I need to cut two four inch squares, one out of red, one out of my background. Does that make sense? Okay, so cut size times two plus one. If you didn't want to waste as much fabric, you could add seven eighths inch. But I just, I just add one, okay? It's entirely up to you. Okay, so I'm going to cut out a four inch square and I'll go ahead and do that right now. So there's one of them, and then I'll use my background piece again, cut out my four inch square. Obviously you see that I've got a lot of fabric here. I've, I'm going to end up making a few of these, I think, which I am so good with because they're so fun. All right, five and nine. There we go. All righty. This is how you do eight half square triangles at one time, my friends. Cut size times two, add one. We have a background piece and we have the full, uh, the full piece that you're, that's going into the project. Okay, I'm gonna put right sides together. And this time I'm gonna go back to my magic wand again and draw. Again, the nice thing is I have everything right here. If you don't have something like this, you can do a ruler, you've just got to Go over, put the lines at the diagonal, corner to corner, do your quarter inch, turn it around, do the same thing on the other side, okay? All right, go ahead and mark this, and just like that. And I'm gonna do it the opposite way. So two different, two different directions, whoops, two different directions here. Line is on the corner, from corner to corner, diagonal to diagonal, and I'm just going to draw this on, on each side. Okay, kind of looks like a railroad crossing. All right, so I have my lines here. So um, here in just a sec, I will take it to the sewing machine, and I will sew directly on both of those lines, or I should say all four of those lines, right? All right, here we go. Now, if you were doing a whole bunch of these, uh, you would, you know, chain piece all of this, right? And you would just do one after the other. It'd be so fun. Okay, I did two lines. Now I'm going to go back and do the opposite ones. So you can see here, I have sewn down both sets of lines right there. Okay, let's go back over to the cutting station and I'm going to cut at this. This is, if you've never done eight squ half square triangles at once, oh my goodness, this is so fun. It's like, it's life changing, my friends, life changing. How many times can you say that, right? <laughs> All right. So the idea here is that we're going to cut vertically, we're going to cut horizontally, and then we're going to cut in between those sewn lines, all right? So I'm going to start out with my vertical cut, and I just am lining it up right there where those lines intersect and trim. I'll rotate my mat around and do the same thing on the other side. Again, just going down the middle. I'm going horizontal and vertical. Now, I'll go back and do the lines in between. Trim it 
gem and one more. Perfect. Ta-da! Woo! Isn't that exciting? Eight half square triangles, folks. Alrighty, so with this, I'll just do a couple trim downs because I only need two for this particular project. I'll save these for more pineapples later. Again, I'm going to put one and a half inch line on top of the sewn line. It's another critical piece is it has to be on the sewn line. When I've taught this before, one of the mistakes that can be made, see, just a little trim, just a little haircut. One of the mistakes that's happened before is that people will put it, they get confused, they put it on the outside edge. You don't want it on the outside edge, you want it on the sewn line, okay? So just remember that. So there's one, and I'll do one more, give it a little Superman cut. Did I already trim it up? I don't think I did. <laughs> Let me trim it up first. All right. All right, there we go, and there we go. All right, now give my Superman cut. Okay. And there you have it. Ta-da! All my half score triangles are done. Call it good. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and uh, why don't you go back to your workstations. I want you to get, let's see, how many half score triangles are in this one? I want you to have four blue half score triangles and four red half score triangles. So you decide however, whatever method you want. You could do the two at once, the four at once, or the eight at once. <laughs> Vivian says, you scare me by not closing your cutter before laying it down. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do better, Vivian. I promise. I promise. Safety first. I know. It's just a habit. All right. How are we doing? Um, okay, good question, Cheryl. Cheryl asked, are you sewing a quarter inch or a, a scant quarter inch or a real quarter inch? Um, well, on the half score triangles, you are sewing directly on the line. Um, when you do the four at once, you're doing um, the quarter inch all the way around, so it's a real quarter inch. When we do the easy piecing grid, we're going to talk about that here in just a minute, you are actually doing a quarter inch. Do not do scants on this one. All right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. Get four blues cut out, uh, at half score triangles, get four reds, and let's take a look at a video, shall we? For those of you who are not cutting, um, which ones do I have? Oh, okay. I'm going to show you a great video of Mitchell Pyle. So some of, those, some of you might not know him. Um, he's a uh, well, he's now a college student. Holy cow. He's a college student um, now, but he was a high school student. A couple years ago, we had a program for our high schoolers that we gave them um, a free machine. And what they had to do was they, they did different projects and they um, did it, you know, with social media and stuff to try and get more kids sewing. And what is so cool about this young man is, for one, he is a he is a man, right? And that's an, a demographic that we don't see as often in the sewing industry. But there are so many amazing, talented men out there who are sewing. So I really wanted to showcase that. Plus, I wanted to showcase that even a teenage boy who is an all-star athlete in his high school and now college, he plays soccer in college as well, is loves to sew. And so I thought that we would share this little video that we put together of him so that you guys can enjoy. So go, go cut those uh, half square triangles. My name's Mitchell Pyle. Um, I'm from Brigham City, Utah. A little bit about me, I'm on the soccer team at Snow College, and I like to be in the outdoors, hunting, fishing, doing various activities. You can really learn anything you really want to if you just put your mind to it. And sewing, I never really wanted to sew like clothes. What I wanted to do, not a lot of people do. It's kind of cool to like be a different type of sewer. 
I started with just little bags and stuff, and that was kind of cool. So then I got a little more confident, and I was like, hey, I want to make a gun case. It was really cool once I got it all put together, and whenever I go shooting, I look at that and go, I made that cool case. I would say taking on this tent is the most challenging because you have to do kind of a lot of research on it and a lot of looking at other tents and thinking of how they went about to sew this seam together. Super fun experience for me. I learned a lot and got to meet some really cool people here at my girlfriend's coat shop. I kind of learned how to be my own person through sewing. Growing up, I cared a lot what like people think about me, but as I went through this process, I began to like just be proud of what I do and not care what other people think if they judge you or something like that. It's kind of funny because when I tell people that I sew, the majority of them think it's actually pretty cool. So I would just say go for it and see what you can do. You have potential to do whatever you want, so give it a try and see what happens. Isn't that great? What do you guys think about that? We have that on our YouTube channel. If you ever want to share that with um, your audience, that would be awesome. Maybe some of you have grandsons who are in that age category or, you know, te just teenagers to think that it doesn't necessarily have to be a quilt, that there's a lot of things that out in the sewing industry, that's really important and we need everyone. We need everyone sewing. All right. So I'm just putting mine together, as you can see, and I'll go ahead and answer questions as uh, I'm doing this. So if you have any questions, go ahead and raise your hand on the raise your hand um, little function, and David will unmute you and ask you to join us. David, do we have anything? I can't hear. Okay, there was a question earlier about what the difference is between Tucker 1, 2, and 3 is. The one I'm using today is Tucker 1. Okay, and that's the one I use the most often. The other ones, Tucker 2, it has um, sizes on there that are not full half increments half inch increments and Tucker 3 is a, just a larger ruler so that's another one that you'll probably use quite often so between the three of them definitely Tucker 1 is the one that I is my main go-to and then after that would be Tucker 3 and then Tucker 2 but that's that's just me Mary Jo has a question Okay, I'm back. What I was going to ask before was, I've seen like wall hangings, quilts, whatever, that are made with all these different color squares for, and in a heart shape. This grid would work perfect for that instead of having to sew all these because it's like I look at it and it's like, oh, I love it, but it's like I don't want to sew all these squares exactly. together. Exactly. Make sure oh they're right. Gosh, you know, I mean, if you're a little bit of a perfectionist, it can drive you nuts. So I have never done one, but I would do it with the grid. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Once you do the grid, you really see other ways to use it, and it's so much fun. <laughs> and you start looking at blocks completely different. See what I'm doing here? I'm like rotating this around. Because like a puzzle, I want to find the right angle of what I'm, where I'm supposed to be. Okay, I've got two more to add on. And we'll be good. How are you guys coming along with yours? Someone asked if you need to open up your seams or uh, press them to the side and my answer is just press them to the side okay Robin has a question hi Chris um, Robin? 
question is, I had to leave for about 20 minutes, and so now I'm lost because I missed all the stuff I definitely don't know. So will I okay. watch it later? Absolutely. There will be a replay link, and you can watch it at any time. Okay. And what is a crumb, crumb quilt or crumb sewing you guys are doing? Oh, <laughs> crumb, crumb quilts is when you have all these little scraps left over from other projects and you start sewing them into blocks and then those blocks go into quilts it's uh -huh. very scrappy it's very improv improv it's kind of like the crazy quilts that our grandmothers or great grandmothers used to do and they used what they had right so we do the same thing with crumb quilts oh okay gotcha yeah right. and i have a video for, for it too i will definitely watch it later <laughs> I lost awesome. on the math part <laughs> stuff, so. That's right. Okay, so you can see now this is looking like a pineapple, right? Woohoo, this is exciting stuff, my friends. Okay, so now it comes time to fuse it. So I'm going to take my iron. Now this is going to scare some people because you're going to see there's the this fusible behind it all, right? And you, what you want to make sure is that you don't put the iron on the fusible. But you might think to yourself, but wait a minute, you have fusible in between those pieces, right? It's okay because the fabric lifts on top, so really it's not going to touch your iron. So you, you can watch it and, and believe me when I say that, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a press all the way around, being careful not to go to my outside edges. Now, I could have trimmed this up a lot more. I just got lazy and didn't trim it all the way up. But you definitely could. If you're like scared that you'll go over onto the fusible, no worries. You know, obviously it will depend on the size of your iron as well. I love this one because it's a great travel size. But um, but I've, I've done it with a regular size iron as well. So again, I'm just fusing this all into place. You, when you do that, you want to make sure that your uh, pieces do not go over top of the grid lines. You've got to see the grid lines. And so that's why earlier when someone was asking me about she was drawing her own grid lines on and she wanted to um, know what size to do it. And I said, it's got to be a titch over what your cut size is going to be. That's because you need to leave these spaces. This is really where the magic happens, is by leaving the spaces. Okay, I think we're good. If you need to add a little steam to it, you can do that too. I actually, when I do these projects, I, I use steam all day long. All right, so I'm just going to put that on my little iron rest there. All right, so you can see that my pieces are all fused on. Let me show you... Let's see, I got another example over here. Let me set that aside for just a second. I'm going to show you this one. This is also the start of the flag. And do you see how you have those spaces in between? Yeah, this has not been sewn together. It's only been fused together like a puzzle. So this is wonderful. Again, you, you can lay out. You can, you can say, oh, I don't like that here. I'll put it here instead. Now let's pretend that you fuse something on and you think, oh, darn it. I fused it in the wrong place, right? You think that could ever possibly happen to you? <laughs> Absolutely. No worries. No worries. All you're going to do is take your iron to it. Whoops warm that little piece up and it will come right off okay so no problem if you have a if you accidentally put something in the wrong spot just warm it up no big deal all right and you can see that this flag is also consisting of all these half square triangles and because they were all the same you could just do the eight square half square triangles at once and you're going to be able to get two stars out of that Okay, because one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. You can do two stars out of the eight at once method. All right. So again, the reason why you want to have the 
that little bit of space in between is because of what happens here. When you go to sew, you fold it and it will go right down and now you sew all the way down. Ta-da! It's amazing, right? You can see I've already done one and I used a different color thread so it would be a little bit easier to, to see. But you can see that I used a quarter inch seam allowance and this is not where we use a scant. We do not use scants on this one, okay? We're going to use a perfect quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to go all the way down. So, let me go ahead and grab my pineapple. And I hope all of you are ready. Oh, you know what I just... I had a couple pieces that didn't want to stick on. Look at that. Let me, let me try to get those babies on again. All right. So have your pieces ready to go and then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and what we're going to do is we're going to sew all in one direction down a set of vertical lines. If I look at that and go, oh, oh that doesn't look right, right? No, nope, that doesn't look right. I'm going to turn it around. Is that right? Yep, that's it. All right, let me try and get those. I obviously, that top section, I didn't hold it on long enough. You know what I also realized? You want it on high. I think that was part of my problem. It wasn't wanting to go through those multiple layers. You want your 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 uh, iron on high. All right. Now let's say you were doing a bigger quilt. Uh, do you have to, uh, you know, have it panel? by panel and sew each panel one at a time. Actually, you can piece, or well, excuse me, put all the pieces on one panel at a time. But if you have a leftover, like a little piece right here, you can overlap the next panel. That's really cool. Because now you can overlap, there's no pinning, and overlap the next panel, and now you have all, everything fused in place, and you can go from there. Yes. Can you talk about the little corner marks or triangles? Oh, thank you. Okay, I forgot to talk about the little corner marks and half square triangles. Yes. In fact, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I probably, I'm looking at this, I probably should adjust this one. I'm just going to peel this off. So there's one of the, the keys of getting a really nice corner on your half square triangles is making sure just make sure that those um, that diagonal line goes right into that little um, corner mark. Okay. Now it's not going to fit all the way to it, but you want to make sure because there's wiggle room here. You obviously it could be like this, and it would be a little off. So just make sure that the the seam line goes right into those corner marks. Okay. That's the other thing about this method is even if you don't have perfect piecing or not perfect piecing, perfect cutting, um, it's okay because it's going to be caught in the seam allowance. Okay. Thank you. Great question. Another, another question. Another question. Would the iron stick to the gaps? Nope. The, nope, the iron is not sticking to the gaps because the fabric lays on top. And so it actually is not. Now, if you're having that trouble, you could use um, a pressing cloth in between, and that would be fine. But even in talking to Carmen, she never uses a pressing cloth. She said, nope, the fabric just lays right there on top. So it's not, there's, you can see, well, let me see right there. You can see right there, there's nothing fusible on there. There's no gunk at all. So it's pretty cool. Now, yes, if I went over into this area, it would, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, you know what I'm going to do beforehand, though? Let me put this aside. I am going to actually trim this up because I'm only making one pineapple. So I'm just going to trim this up so it's just out of my way. I don't want to mess with it.
and I'm trimming along those dotted lines. Not according to the fabric. Okay, it's coming together. All right, let's go over to the sewing machine. I'm going to, oh, not yet. <laughs> I'm going to uh, fold this over. I'm going to do all my vertical uh, sides first. So I'm, see how it just folds right over. So right there. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So, and the same thing on this one. So, so if you need to, you can watch me um, sew that first one, and and then you can go back to your workstations and do the same thing. All right, right over here. I'm going to put my presser foot down and begin to sew here in just a sec. There we go. All right. So again, I'm just folding this over. And I'm just, I have my, happen to have my presser foot, my quarter inch presser foot guide on. So I'm just using the edge of my presser foot as my guide. Look how fast that is. <laughs> Does that beat doing it one at a time or what? <laughs> right? First seam done. Now to my next one. I'm gonna fold it over and sew again. And one more seam. Fold it over and make sure that your dotted line is on the fold. If it got a little off, you're going to want to just kind of maneuver it a little bit. You want your dotted line on the fold. And cut. Look at that. Woohoo! Looks like a very skinny pineapple. <laughs> it will go back in proportion here in just a minute. Okay, so there you have it. There's that one. And uh, why don't you go ahead and work on yours, and we'll be back here in just a minute. Okay, no, actually no. All right, I'm gonna grab some scissors here real quick. Can you unmute me? There you go. Okay. Um, let me answer any other questions while we finish. Carolyn asked, doesn't that mat spin? Yes, it does. Sometimes I spin it, sometimes I just don't. But yes, this one definitely does. The size of fusible I used for the flag was one and a half inches, I believe. Yeah, one and a half inch finish grip. What other questions do we have? And we can unmute you as well if you have a question that you want to say, ask in person. I 
I'm so glad. Chrissy said, this looks fun. I can hardly wait for my grid to arrive in the mail. And Nina shares, I'm so loving this method. After watching, I will definitely be ordering the grid. Absolutely, absolutely. It is, it really is so fun. You know what I'll show you while we're waiting is that Ten Sisters has lots of different books on how to use this as well. And I'm gonna show you some of my favorites. Let's go ahead and pull the camera down here. Take a look at this. How cute is that? Little owls. This would be cute. So this one is from Quilts for Kids. Okay. So this takes six panels. So, and we sell the panels by six panels in a package. And so you can see that this is a puzzle. This is part of the puzzle. This is part of the puzzle. And then it makes the finished one right there. I think we've got a picture here somewhere. Here we go. Can we get up closer on that one? So here is uh, that sweet little owl quilt for a baby. So much fun. So much fun. So you can see how scrappy it is. And it was made in six panels. Six pieces. Then you've got like the little elephant. How about an alligator? <laughs> and she even has some that are in here that aren't even necessarily for children. She's got the pinwheel quilt. That would be full of half score triangles. Ooh, look at the giraffe. Again, the giraffe is made up of six panels. So the nice thing is you can think about like, okay, today I'm just gonna focus on one panel. The next day I'm gonna focus on another panel. Two weeks later, I'm gonna focus on a different one. It's so nice to have it like in these bite-sized chunks. There you can see a picture of the giraffe, the fox, the hedgehog, so cute. Here's another one. This is another favorite book of mine of hers, 10 Quilts for 10 Sisters. And yes, I know some of you uh, were part of our webinar in the club with when we had Carmen on. And yes, she does have 10 sisters. And guess what else she has? She has seven brothers. <laughs> Crazy, right? And um, let's see. Okay, so let's take a look at something that we would probably never do. Well, okay, how about this one? The Irish Nine. Again, you could make it as scrappy as you wanted to, or you could make it more of the solid colors and keep it all in one. But this over, this seems a little overwhelming. Over here, you've got it broken down into 13 grids. One, two, three, four, and so forth. And then these little pieces were all part of one grid. This was the 13th grid. And that's all numbers there. So again, you just would make the panel according to the puzzle, <laughs> put it together, sit and put, make yourself a note saying this is panel one, this is panel two, then you bring it all together. And again, I wouldn't necessarily sew them one at a time. I would fuse them one at a time, but then I would do the second fusing and bring them together and do the third fusing, bring them together, fourth fusing, bring them together. And then I would sew all at one time. It's so cool. I love Trip to Paris. Oh, that's always been a favorite quilt of mine. So these are some very traditional looking quilts. Here's the mosaic. So pretty. There's that one that I was showing you earlier. Really fun. And then she's got around the block. This is brand new where she actually has introduced border uh, panels. So in these border panels are done Look, you can see, look how that's done that way. And so you get these great on point quilts done the same way with the grid. 
I love this one. This is a great little sampler quilt. What does she call this? Next Door Neighbors Medallion. Look how cute that is. So again, some great traditional piecing. But it's all done on the grid. So this is done with the panels. Okay, are we ready to move on? Let's go ahead and get this baby done. All right, so before you think, oh, I know what to do now, Chris. All I have to do is now do this, right? And I have to sew this. Oh, slow down. There's one more thing you've got to do. Oh, take a look at that. That kind of flipped up on me. No big deal. I'm just going to press that down in place again. Okay. All right, so before you start doing this, thinking that you know how to do this, trust me, trust me on this, because I've made this mistake before. The first time I did this, I thought, oh, yep, got it, I know what I'm doing. Nope, you gotta do one more thing before you do that. And that is, you're gonna take your pair of scissors and you're going to cut, and I am gonna need a, a, a much closer shot of this one, guys where I'm going to go from the fold into the seam. So I'm just going to cut in between those blocks and I'm just doing a little snip and you just go to the seam line. Now let's pretend that you accidentally went a little beyond the seam line. No worries. Again, no worries because that seam will now be enclosed when you sew opposite. So if you go past that seam, it's really not a problem, I promise. Okay, so I'm gonna just snip, snip. So why don't you go ahead and do that on yours right now as I do mine. And I have one more row. You will be so glad you took the time to do this step, and you'll see why here in just a minute. And Chris, if you cut the seam line, everything is figured out with open number. That's right. Adam reminds me of what I always say, everything is figure outable. And it is. Even with this, it is. Okay. So with all your seams cut, now we're going to get ready to sew the other rows. But before I do that, I'm going to do something else. I want all my seams, just like we do with regular piecing, we want all our seams to go one direction on one row. And what do we do on the second row? We have them all go the other direction. And then on the third row, we have them go all the opposite direction. Why do we do that? Well, it's so that we can nest those seams together. We can butt those up, and again, there is no pinning whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is take my iron, and I'm going to do my first row, and, and just press them over. And I'm going to use some steam, if I had water in this. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. Okay, now that first seam is pretty easy to put down, right? But when you start doing this, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get this one stuck in there. Here's a little trick for you. Simply just fold over this, and now you have an end piece again. And now I'm going to go this way. Again, all my seams going into one direction. You see what happens? Look at this, this is amazing. Now this seam goes this way, this seam goes this way, and when I go to sew, they're butted up perfectly to each other. It's so cool. Okay, so I have that seam going that way, this one going this way. I need to have the next one going the opposite way. So I'm just gonna fold this down and press that way. So continue this method until you have finished all the rows. Okay. 
Any questions while I'm pressing this? The flag pattern is not in the book. We actually send that to you for free with the purchase of um, a package of easy piecing grids. Adam, do we have any questions? I'm not seeing you right now. Do you guys find this relaxing? I hope so. Now you want to make sure all those seams are pressed out. So I've got one more row. Let's see, I went that way, so I need to go the opposite way. Almost done, my friends. If you need to give it a little press from the front to make sure there's nothing, you know, kind of tucked in, you can do that as well. Can you see that? That's exactly what I want because it's gonna be. I'm gonna be bringing in a quarter inch, so it's gonna give it a nice point right there. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Now I'm gonna go back to the machine, and I'm gonna fold down, stitch, fold down, stitch, fold down, stitch. All right, let's head on over. Make sure, once again, that your seams are going opposite directions. So on this row, these are going down. Underneath, they're going up. Notice I don't have, I'm not using any pins. Check it, make sure you're good. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. Oh wow. And I not even my my pieces were not even put perfectly on the grid. So cool. Okay. On to the next one. It's the little things, folks. Okay, I've got going my seams going this direction. I, I just tucked to make sure that my seams are going the opposite direction. This one got moved over so I'm just going to flip it down because I want to make sure that all those seams nest up against each other. like Christmas. <laughs> I have to like open the present. Here we go. Yay! It worked. Okay. I'm going to do another one. Quick check, making sure my seams are going opposite. Go 
fold over, checking my seams. Yep, we're good. Again, you were not using a scant quarter inch. We are using a full quarter inch. Again, notice no pinning. Oops, I lifted up a little bit as I went through. No problem. Ta-da! Oh my goodness. This is so fun. All right, let's come back over to the ironing station. And now I gotta press this puppy really well. <laughs> now let me give you also another suggestion here. Because we're working with white fabrics, you know that sometimes this happens. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I tell you here. Have you ever had the frustration that with as clean as your iron is, sometimes when we go over white fabric and we have bumps, what do we end up getting on, on there? Do you know what I, it's a little dirty. For some reason, it happens. And so I want to share with you just another little tip that I do when I press white fabrics, especially is I'll just use like another piece of fabric to go over top of it. Just a scrap piece or a, you know, a, a pressing cloth or something. Because again, with those bumps, it, it just could, could very well happen that it's just going to give me all sorts of fits with the white fabric and create a little bit of dirt on those seams. Has that ever happened to you? Am I crazy? Am I in the night? Okay, Kenzie says it happens to her. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, I'm giving a nice press. Oh, this is so cute. I'm gonna actually give it a little best press too. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And when I look at it from the back, I can also give it one more press. And yep, this is when you're using steam, my friends. Oh, Carolyn said she stopped making white face masks because of it. Yep, I know, it can be so frustrating. And like I said, you can have the cleanest iron, and yet for some reason, when it wants to go over those bumps, it has a tendency to do that. Oh my goodness, this is so stinking cute. Okay. So hopefully you guys are coming along with yours. I'm going to trim this down, making sure that everything is nice and even. Let's see, if I had one and a half, this should be one and a quarter. Just give it a little haircut. measuring against my seam line in there and that's what's helping me score this block up. That got tucked in a little bit. And of course that looks a little odd right now because that will be tucked in. Does this make you excited to make your own, guys? Yay, 
I see Kim's got hers done. Can you scroll through those pages? Let me see if I can see people. If you have yours done, show. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Did you guys love it? Was it fun? It's so stinking cute. Oh, Lizzie, yours is scrappy, I love it. Who else do we have out there? These guys are just scrolling through my screen, so I'm not going to be able to see everyone's. But Wilma, I love, I see yours. I love it. And Karen. Oh, Karen, I love seeing you here. I have missed you. Who else do we see? Julie and Vicki. Roxana, nice job. Deanna, oh my goodness, so fun. Mary. Cute. I like a lot of you guys are doing super scrappy. I love it. Lisa's got hers. Teresa. Oh my goodness. These are all oh, these are so cute. I want to see patriotic pineapples all over the place. All right. What I'm doing right now is I'm just cutting some borders. Um, it is the 12 o'clock hour. What do you know? We finished doing the pineapple in the two hours, which is cool. Now, obviously, this is going to take you a lot less time the next time you do it, right? We, we just had to go through step by step by step, and I was telling you the whys and the hows and all of that. But now when you start making more, you're going to be able to just go right through it. So if you See you guys later.